So today we're going to be introducing matrices. So there's two big ideas for the next several sections that we're going to look at. Um, you're going to be able to organize data in order to construct matrices. So we're going to take some information and be able to make them. And we're also going to be able to apply the concept of matrix operations and row operations in order to create new matrices. So some really basic fundamental work on changing and modifying a matrix. So let's go ahead and get started with what is a matrix? What is matrix math and what do we call it? Well, matrix math is part of something of what we call linear algebra. And all a matrix is, is a rectangular box. You'll see what looks like a very large set of brackets used to make data arranged into rows and columns and specifically in that order. So what we see here is that A is gonna be a three by two matrix, which means that we have one, two, three rows, and we have one, two columns. <clears throat> it is always going to be listed in that order. A is always going to be a three by two matrix, not a two by three matrix. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but when we get to matrix multiplication, we'll see why that isn't important to always list them as a three by two. An easy way to remember that is that a matrix is always a Roman column. Um, one of the little anachronisms that you have that you might see is, let's do this in blue, is a Roman column. And that idea is that the matrix itself, I'm assuming, looks like a little bit of a Roman column, looks like a little bit of a column. So a Roman column says rows always come first before the columns. Um, the other aspect is that each individual piece of this thing so this piece right here, this piece right here, this piece right here, each individual part is what we call an element. So if I wanna label a specific element, I would say, hey, I wanna find part of matrix A is gonna be subscript MN. So I would say row by column. So if I had A subscript, let's say two, three, I would go to row two, column three, which doesn't actually exist. So it might be like two, one. I go row two, column one, that would be a seven. Um, again, we'll cover that a little bit later. But before we begin, how do we think about a matrix in terms of something that we already know? Well, let's look at the set of equations over here on your left. How would we solve these? Well, one way to solve them is to look at the equation and say, hey, um, what minus three is equal to five? You might say, well, you're so, well, if A was eight, eight minus three is equal to five. If I said what minus four is equal to zero, well, if B was four, four minus four is equal to zero. If I said what plus two is equal to negative eight, well, that would be if C was negative 10 plus two would give us a negative eight. We can see that equations aren't really too bad. In fact, all of these we can solve pretty quickly. If that was seven, if Y was three, or if z was 10. Translating over into a matrix. A matrix is solved almost exactly the same way. If we're looking at this matrix and saying, okay, I have this matrix plus something right here is equal to this matrix. Well, first off, I know that if this is a three by two matrix and this is a three by two matrix, what do you think we're gonna add to this three by two matrix to get a three by two matrix? If you said a three by two matrix, you would be exactly right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, A must be a matrix within itself. And let's actually zoom in while we do this one. So I would look at it the exact same way as I would an equation, except for in this case, I'm gonna look at it piece by piece. I'm gonna look at the top left and say, okay, what plus a negative three is equal to five? I'm looking at the top left in both matrices and saying, okay, well, let's see, what plus a negative three, so what minus three is equal to five? I bet you that would be an eight. I'd look at the next part and say, okay, what plus a negative four is equal to zero? So I could say what minus four is equal to zero? How about a four? I could say something like, how about what plus two is equal to negative eight? Well, I could say negative 10. And I could work my way through this entire matrix looking at it piece by piece by piece. Top right, what plus three is top right 10? 
7. Um, middle, I would say what plus 12 is 15? I would say 3. What minus 14 is negative 4? That would be 10. And what we'll notice is that our resulting answer matrix looks very similar to a set of equations arranged just like this. We would say what minus 3 is 5, what plus 3 is 10. It's literally just a set of equations done all at once. And now one of the biggest things that you might ask yourself is, well, why is this useful? Well, we're going to get into some areas that deal with computing, physics, um, resulting vectors, and it's going to be a way to solve multiple equations all at once. The biggest thing that you're probably going to be solving these for is something like solving systems of equations are usually the first thing that we do. Um, let's go ahead and answer this. How are equations and matrices solved? What similarities do they have? Well, at this level, they're almost solved exactly the same. We're just looking at them piece by piece. And so a few sections that we're going to be covering are going to be adding and subtracting matrices, scaling, and some row operations. You might take a moment and think, well, what seems to be missing? We have adding and subtracting. We have scaling, which sounds a lot like multiplication, but we are missing division. And you'll notice that matrix multiplication is going to be a topic that we cover, but matrix division really isn't a thing. So let's, without further ado, let's jump into our first we have review of solving equations. So just a quick refresher on how we go ahead and solve equations is gonna be, we have four basic steps. Now we realize that these steps can be broken in many ways, but these are the four generic steps that if we don't wanna to think too much, these always work in this order. Um, cleaning up any equation, we get rid of any fractions and any parentheses and any like terms. So if we see multiple terms on one side, we combine them. The second step is we inverse addition and subtraction, which means if we're not solving for that term on that side of the equation, we push it to the other side. Next step would be coefficients. Once we've isolated the term that we're trying to solve for, we get rid of any coefficient that it has, and then we get rid of any power or root by clearing the index. So with these four steps, you can pretty much solve any linear equation. So let's take a look at some of the first ones. So for question number one, we're solving x squared equals 16. So to solve these, I would just go ahead and I would take the root. The opposite of a power is a root. So I'm going to say x is equal to 4. Now, anytime I artificially introduce a, let's do this in green, square root, don't forget, we take both the positive and negative version of that number. So x isn't just equal to 4, it's also equal to negative 4. Likewise, the, if the opposite of a power is a root, the opposite of a root is a power. The way that we get rid of these is we go ahead and we cube it. So the cube root of x cubed is going to be x, and 2 cubed is going to be 8. Now the big thing to remember here is, albeit when we take a root, we take both versions. When I use a power, I just have the 1. Let's go ahead and add another step to this. If I'm clearing the coefficients, I'm going to look at these two and say, okay, before I get rid of the root, I have to get rid of the coefficient. So why don't we go ahead and we divide both sides by 3, which will leave me with an x squared is equal to 16, in which case then I go through and I solve and say, hey, x is equal to a positive or negative 4. Same thing right here. I could either get rid of the root or the, or the coefficient. So to get rid of the coefficient, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, which leaves me with the cube root of x is equal to 2. And then I go ahead and cube them, and I say x is equal to 8. Now again, these rules can be broken, but we're doing the generic approach. So the next thing, the first step we're going to do is if we see an equation like this, we move the non-terms. If we're solving for x, that doesn't have an x, move it away. So 3x squared is equal to... 48. Then we go ahead and after the non-terms, we clear the coefficient, then clear the index. So coefficient be gone, index be gone. Same thing applies over here. A lot going on, but if I'm solving for x, this doesn't have an x, move it to the other side. The way we do that is we subtract it. 
Then we clear the coefficient, and we clear the index. Awesome. And then if I get to something the most complicated, <clears throat> I'm going to look at and say, okay, first I need to clean up what's going on right here. I've got some fractions that I could get rid of. I have some like terms I could get rid of. The first thing that I specifically am going to do is I'm going to clear the fractions, which means I see these fractions. I'm going to find the least common denominator and multiply the entire equation by that. What that's going to do is 7 times this fraction is going to get rid of the fraction and leave me with the numerator. It's not going to go inside the parentheses because I only distribute once. I don't distribute inside, inside, again, just once. It's going to clear this fraction, and it's going to clear this fraction. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of any parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the 3 into there and get a 3x squared minus 39. And the last thing for cleaning it up is I'm going to combine any like terms. I see I've got a few things over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a 9. Then at this point, once I've done those steps, clear the fractions, get rid of the parentheses, and combine the terms, I have a regular equation of which move the non-term, clear the coefficient, clear the index. So why don't you go ahead and try number 14 real quick. Go ahead and apply those same three steps. Get rid of the fractions, distribute to get rid of the parentheses, and then combine any like terms that you happen to see before moving the term, clearing the coefficient, and clearing the index. Unpause it when you're done and see all you did. Okay. So the first thing that I would do is I would go ahead and I would say, hey, I'm going to clear this whole fraction by multiplying everything by 5 which gets rid of that, gets rid of this fraction, and it gets rid of that fraction. Now, if this was not a fraction, let's say this was an 11, I would actually multiply by that 11 by 5 and get a 55. But because this is a fraction, that basically just negates itself. So clear the fraction. I'm going to clear the parentheses and say I'm going to distribute this 2. The last thing of cleaning this thing up is I'm going to go ahead and combine terms right here. Awesome. And then at this point, I've achieved a regular equation. I'm going to go ahead and move the term, get the coefficient, get the index. So let's get the term, get the coefficient, and then get the index. Boom. And there we go.